Securities lending revenues are up for the year, but are you missing out on opportunities? Are you asking yourself, how can I earn more lending revenues without having to go through the pain and the hassle of getting new approvals? If so, then this video is for you. I'll give you five tips for making more money without having to change your program. And oh yeah, you don't have to be an investor. If you are a service provider, like an agent lender, you can also apply these tips to your clients' portfolios. So if securities lending is your thing, if you're a lender, a borrower, an intermediary, or just plain interested, then this is the place for you. So let's get started. Hello everyone, I'm Roy Zimmerhansel and welcome to another episode of the Fundamentals of Securities Lending. Today, I'll be giving you five tips on how to improve the returns from your lending program through making the most of what has already been approved and testing that against what you're doing today and what your service provider offers. Now this is real stuff. There was a news story earlier this year about an investor who lost out on lending revenue because they didn't do what I'm about to reveal to you. But before I get to the tips, let's do a quick review of lending revenues year to date so we can determine what the environment is like for lenders. S&P IHS market tells us that the first half of 2022 was up 12% over 2021, the best half year performance since 2008. Loan balances are up in almost every segment they report on with average fees up across most, but not all sectors. Exchange traded products generated 453 million in revenue, setting new all time highs and delivering a 48% year on year increase. Now that includes both equity and fixed income ETPs. So whichever you hold, there's likely to have been increased interest. Corporate bond lending revenue shot through the roof with a 97% increase over the same period last year in terms of revenue. That's hardly surprising given the rising interest rate environment and making older bonds less attractive, but also putting some doubt in the future fortunes of companies whose funding costs are likely to rise dramatically as they refinance their positions. And government bond lending revenues grew 12% year over year for both directional trades and HQLA demand. Data Lend tells us more about August with revenues ahead of August 2021 by 10%. For equities, North America drove the overall increase while Europe and Asia fell. Corporate debt increased 98% over August last year and government debt rose 11%. Now I haven't dug into the figures for September yet, but as September was the worst month for the S&P and NASDAQ since 2002, I think it's reasonable to assume there's been a positive impact on lending revenues, at least for the month of September. The S&P was down 9.3%, the Dow 8.8%, and the NASDAQ declined by 10.5%. Now, as you can see from the chart, I've listed seven major equity indices, and they're all down on the year and all had a pretty bad September. Add into that the impact of rising interest rates on corporate bonds. You know, you can see the uh, year-to-date performance of the market IBOX, US, US dollar uh, liquid investment grade index. If you started with $10,000 in the index at the start of the year, it would be worth just under $8,000 at the end of September. And that September itself had a 5% fall during that month. Top it up with uh, UMR phase six being rolled out in September. It's likely that HQLA borrowing is up as well as an increase in government bond trading driving the additional demand. So the bottom line is I'd expect another really strong revenue month for September, adding to a very good overall year so far. It's likely that if you are an investor that lends, you are having a pretty good year. And if you're an agent lender, you're also having a good year alongside your clients. So why bother to see if you can up the revenues further? Well, first of all, who doesn't want to make more money? If you are a service provider, you want to make sure you're doing the best for your clients so you don't risk a competitor pitching even better performance to your clients. Also, the tips I'll give you are the ones that keep on giving in good markets and bad. And look, if markets continue to fall, then the lending revenue bonanza will level off 
on the equity side as traders eventually book profits to close out their short positions. Now, it's important for you to note that I can't know what your approval process is. So when I make the following suggestions, that's based on uh, my experience over many, many years of how most investors approve, operate, and manage their lending activity in the program. The tips I'll give you are the typical ones that can be used to expand your program without needing to seek additional approvals, but that may not be true for your own individual situation. Of course, you have to follow the rules of your organization, relevant regulations and regulators, and additionally, any change you make to your lending program will change its risk reward profile, so speak with an expert before making any changes. Of course, as part of my consulting business, that's exactly what I help investors with. The problem, or at least hassle with making the most of your lending revenues, is getting approvals and authorizations to expand your program. It takes time, it takes effort, and an appetite from the approvers to make decisions at a time of generally falling markets. You know, in my experience, when markets are falling, management typically doesn't want to be distracted from their focus on overall portfolio returns. And while securities lending revenues are a great addition to portfolio returns, particularly when overall returns are falling. But look, the reality is that lending returns fade into the background if overall portfolio returns are down 10%, 20% or more. So how do you deal with that situation? Well, by making the most of what you have, and that's where the following five tips come in. Now let's get to the tips. Number one, check all your portfolios have been enabled for lending. You know, most institutional investors have a global diversified portfolio invested by a number of external portfolio managers. But over time, some managers will be terminated, new ones engaged, new mandate types, new portfolio allocations being made, either to markets or asset types. And what all of this means is that there's a very strong possibility that along the way, or particularly with newer funds, some of them may not have been administratively enabled to join the lending program. Check that all funds have been set up to participate in lending. Tip number two, check all the assets in your funds that have been approved uh, are actually enabled for lending. As I just mentioned, over time there can be a lot of change with the portfolio composition for each separately managed account that an investor has. Now maybe that a fund initially set up to hold only equities may have added ETFs or corporate bonds over time. Or maybe it's a balanced portfolio and government bonds as well. Or that an investment is made in a new market and that market hasn't been set up. So it's possible therefore that while a fund may have been enabled to lend equities say at the start of a lending program, when other asset types or other markets get added to the portfolio, people won't necessarily make the connection and be aware that the new assets have been added and as a result, they may not have been made available for loan. So imagine if you have ETFs corporate bonds or a hot emerging market accounts and they haven't been lending during 2022, a record return year. Number three, check that you're lending in all the markets where your agent is live. You know, alongside the potential that an investor may, may make investments in new markets or asset types, agent lenders also expand their programs over time. You need to check that your portfolio is active in all the markets where your agent is actively lending. Tip number four, check the approved borrower list. To me, the biggest single risk in securities lending is determining who you will lend to. Now, I think that lending investors should constantly be reviewing the list of approved borrowers from their agents to add, remove, or cap exposures to borrowers. This is particularly important at volatile times and weak markets, the kind that we've been experiencing in 2022. And by the way, at the time of recording this, there are all kinds of rumors and buzz uh, about uh, one or more uh, major investment banks that are due for restructuring any day now. So it just kind of highlights the uh, volatility and the uncertainty in the markets. In any case, having exposure to a wider group of counterparties is likely to generate increase revenues. Just make sure they're ones that you want to be dealing with. 
Tip number five, revisit your collateral profile. Now, this tip alongside with a counterparty review are the two most likely to need explicit approvals before proceeding. But that's not necessarily true in every case. For example, I've seen situations where an investor has approved equity collateral that the agent will accept, but the people at the investor who administer the lending program have chosen to exclude a specific market due to prevailing market circumstances, and that's their entitlement, but they may not revisit it. So they're permitted to take a broader range, but choose to narrow it down and then never revisit it. Maybe, maybe they forget that they've made that decision and need to actually look at it again. Or maybe cash collateral was approved, but in a lower negative interest rate environment, they opted out even though they have the approval to accept cash. Always remember that a wider range of collateral is likely to generate higher returns. Let me recap those for you again. Number one, check all your portfolios have been enabled for lending. Number two, check that all of the assets in your funds have been approved and are enabled for lending. Number three, check that you are actively lending and enabled in all the markets where your agent is live. Number four, check the approved borrower list. And number five, revisit your collateral profile. In my experience, some, most, or all of these actions can lead to higher revenues. And for many lending investors, this can be achieved without having to seek any new approvals. I'll say again, that may not be the case for your own individual situation, so you need to check before making any changes. In summary, any change you make to any of these five areas will generate more income for you. Do it very quickly and without needing to go through the pain of getting additional approvals.